in this video, I want to explain to you variables, okay? A variable can be seen as like a container that holds something. A variable can hold and contain numbers, it can contain sentences, uh, it can contain all kinds of different things. It can contain a specific ID that links to a resource like a sprite or a sound effect or another object. Variables are, again, another fundamental thing that you're going to want to understand when it comes to programming and especially when it comes to GameMaker because you're going to be using them a lot. Uh, a variable would contain something like how many hit points your players have or how many bullets you have in your gun for your shoot 'em up game. Uh, variables are, are really awesome. They're very diverse. And thankfully, in things like GameMaker and GML, which is what we're programming in, a variable is very easy to make, very easy to understand. And in this video, we're going to learn how, to, how they work. So in your object player now, we're going to add a create event. So remember, I explained this in the last video, this is when your object is created, okay? So it's when it pops into existence. Well, when we launch our game, and we already have our object player here, this is basically, if we already have it into the game, and we don't spawn it in later, your create event will run the moment you test your game. So the moment I click play on Game Maker, boom, the create event will run for this object immediately because it's being created then. So actually, when you launch Game Maker, the first thing to load is the room. After that, all of the instances that you want in there starting off. So let's double click on our object player, and we have our create event. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give him some hit points. So we're going to give him the ability to live and die. <laughs> so we're going to name our variable just hit points. So just write this, hit points equals, and we'll just say 100. You can give it anything. You could give it 1,000 hit points or 500. But we're just going to say hit points equals 100. And uh, I'll try to make this maybe a little bigger here for you. OK, that might help a lot. So hit points equals 100, and we just created our variable. So now we have to tie this variable into some other code so that we can actually uh, you know, get some use out of it, because that just making a variable alone doesn't do anything until we tie it into code. So what we're going to do is, uh, I know when we click space here, the last video we just made it to where it kills our object, but what we're going to do is say, when we're out of hit points, then we're going to kill our player. Okay, and then after that, of course, when our player is destroyed, it triggers this message that we put in the last video. So let's do this. When we click space, what we're going to do is we're going to say, instead of it just destroying our player, we're going to subtract um, 25, uh, let, let's say 20 hit points from our player. So to do that, you just say hit points minus equal however many you want. So we'll just say 20 semicolon. Okay, so every time we click space, it's going to subtract 20 hit points. So when we run the game, click F5, we click space. So we, if we click it five times, we're at zero. So we clicked it five times, nothing happened. We can keep clicking and clicking and clicking. Obviously, I'm sure you're smart enough to know nothing's going to happen. Because, and right now, we're probably in the negative. So once we hit zero and we click, keep clicking space, it's going to keep subtracting 20. Nothing's going to happen. We have to tell the game everything we want it to do. It would help if we could see how many hit points we had. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click add event and we're going to click draw and then we're going to click draw again, okay? And we're going to write a couple things here. First, we're going to say draw under slash self and put parentheses in the semicolon. Whenever you use the draw event in an object like your player, you have to draw out yourself, okay? Uh, and I'll show you why here in a second. If we did not have this code and we ran the game, uh, our player is going to be invisible. He is in the game, but he's invisible because the draw event overrides whatever you put the sprite in. But when we say draw under slash self parentheses and then we run the game, 
uh, that draw event is now drawing self. It's drawing whatever sprite you have in your player, or I'm, I'm sorry, in your in your object. So that's the first thing. Then we're going to say draw under slash text. Okay, we're going to put parentheses and a semicolon, and within draw text, we have to give it three what we call arguments. And you can see at the bottom of this code window, right where my mouse is, it shows you the arguments you need. You need to write out the X position, the Y position, and a string. A string is essentially a sentence within quotation marks. Anything you write that's in quotations is in programming language called a string, okay? So in other words, to draw out text, like we want to draw out our hit points, we have to say where we want it drawn and what we want to draw, <laughs> okay? What we want to write out, the text. So we're going to just say, uh, let's just write this out. I don't, I don't know, just somewhere random. Let's just say 250 X position, 250 Y position. So if we go to our room, we can kind of figure out about where that's going to be. It's going to be about right here, because you can see at the bottom left above output, it's, you know, that's around 250, 250. So it's going to draw it about right here on the level. Let's go back to our workspace. 250, 250, and then we, we want to draw out our hit points. So we're just going to write that variable in, again, separating everything with comments. We're just going to write out hit points, okay? Now when we run the game, it's going to show us on the screen how many hit points we have. Now it's hard to see because it's small and it's white. So what we're going to do is create a font. So go over here to now your font folder and create a font. And we're just going to say FN, FNT, which stands for font, under slash hit points. And you name that whatever you want. And what we're going to do is just make the size a lot bigger. And you have all these different fonts that you can play around with. Um, but we're just going to make it a lot bigger. And we also don't want it white because that kind of clashes with our background. So we have our font. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back to my player. And now in between draw, draw self and draw text, before we draw the text, we want to set a font. So we're just going to say draw under slash set under slash font. And we're going to say FMT under slash hit points. And this will now anything under this uh, in any font other than if we change it again, is going to be set to what we made. And now we want to change the color. We're going to say draw under slash set under slash color. And we're going to do the parentheses and the semicolon. We're going to say C under slash red. And now, you know, the, the code window kind of helps you along. If you say C under slash, you see all these colors that it kind of helps you out with. And we're just, we're just going to say red. This will make it all red. So now when we run the game, we can see we have 100 right there. When we click space, we can see it subtracting from our health. Isn't that awesome? Cool. Okay, so we're, now we're at minus 260 health. He's very dead, but he's still very happy here. Uh, now, what we need to do is just code out something that will detect when we are at zero hit points or if we're below zero, instance destroy. Take our player out. So we're going to add another event. We're going to call it the step event, and we're and we're just going to you have step, begin, step, end step. Uh, we're just going to say step. Your game by default runs at 30 frames per second. It might also be at 60, but I'm pretty sure it's at 30 frames per second. Each step is a frame. So every uh, 30, or I'm sorry, every second, uh, one second is 30 frames. Okay, it's kind of like a movie, video games, they're all made up of frames per second. And a step is each frame. So every second you're going to have 30 steps. So this is going to be constantly checking if the player's hit points are where they need to be. Okay, and there's a little bit more to it, but that's, you know, a basic explanation. So, we're going to we're going to do this, and I'll explain this more in the next video. If hit points is less than or equal to the number zero. Then we're going to put these curly brackets. You click shift, kind of near your enter key, curly bracket there, and then a cur go down twice, a curly bracket then. So if my hit point variable is less than zero, I'm going to run some code right here. 
And essentially, we're just going to run one piece of code, instance under slash destroy, semicolons. So now, this step event is checking 30 times per second. If our hit point gets below zero, take our player out. And of course, when that happens, that triggers our destroy event. Do you see how much you're learning here? So let's go ahead and click F5 to run our game. Of course, we can walk around with the arrow keys, but now let's click our space, click space again, again, again. Okay, it's gonna go to zero. You just died, right? And now when I click okay, everything disappears, even our hit points, because our hit points is drawn in the object player. Anything to do with that object player is completely gone. So congratulations, you are, you are making a lot of ground in only three videos. You are learning in essence what makes up uh, the fundamentals of just about every game. You can take what you've already learned and begin to play around with stuff and make something really cool. Last thing I'll show you is in space. Of course, we have it set to minus 20. It's subtracting 20 hit points every time. We could also say, you kind of make it a random number. We could say hit points minus equals I random under slash range and uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I spelled that wrong. I random under slash range, and we could give it two numbers in parentheses here. We could say subtract anywhere from 15 comma to 25 hit points. That will give us a random number between 15 and 25. So that'll kind of break it up a little bit. And if we run the game again, we click space, 83, 61. Notice it's more random numbers, it's not just a, like a the same number every time. You know, 27. 10, and uh, you just died, because obviously I went below 10, and there we go. So I hope this video helped. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like. That helps so much with the algorithm. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because this series is going to keep on going. We're taking you from this all the way to a pro. So I'm so excited for the future videos. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Even if you don't have a question, just let me know you're out there. That really encourages me to make more videos, and I appreciate all all the support you guys have already given me, you guys and gals, thank you. I know you're out there. Those comments really mean a lot. They really help. And uh, it also boosts this video so it can help more and more people. Remember, this, uh, this series is for the very beginner when it comes to programming and using Game Maker Studio 2. I appreciate you so much for watching. Thank you for being there. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.